Since there's not much wind today, I'm going to show you my process for rigging the boat and getting it ready to go sailing from the way that I store it when it's in the slip. If you're going to be on a boat by yourself, in cold weather or water or with small kids, it's a good idea to have some sort of personal flotation device. You never know what you're going to need until it's too late to go get it. I usually wear an auto-inflating life preserver. That's really nice because it stays out of my way when I'm working on the boat, but it's always there when I need it. Dropping the engine in the water and getting it started used to be the last thing that I'd do before setting out. Then the tail end of last year, I started having engine problems and I got really tired of getting the entire boat set up only to have to take everything down again when I couldn't get the engine running reliably. Now, I drop it down, get it started and warmed up, and make sure I'm happy with the way it's running before I do everything else. That saves me a lot of heartache later on. My engine has a vent on top and a fuel selector on the side that I leave closed and off when I'm not using the engine. And this is why we check the engine before everything else. There she goes. While I'm at the stern of the boat, I drop the rudder in the water, making sure that it's all the way down and free and clear to turn. If they're stock, a compact usually has a handle at the pivot point of the rudder that you can use to set the tension. Mine doesn't have one, but if you do, you should give it a turn or two to make sure the rudder doesn't come up as you're under sail. You don't want it too tight, because if you happen to hit anything, you definitely want that rudder to be able to move. Next up, turn on any navigation devices that you have so they have time to boot and get an initial location fix. While I'm in the cabin, I toss out any throwable flotation, cockpit cushions, and make sure I know where the winch handle is. I also stow the hatch boards down under the cockpit seats where they'll be out of the way. I keep the battery topped up with a small solar panel that lives in the cockpit locker when it's not in use. The other locker has the loose end of the main sheet. It's important to very carefully roll up the sail cover as you take it off. It by no means makes it any easier to put it back on when you're done, but it makes you feel like you're being proactive on the front end of things at least. I tuck it in the cabin, under one of the cockpit seats, so it can be nice and tangled when I need it next. My boat has the halyards run to the cockpit, so I open the rope clutch for the jib before I go up to set it. That gives me a little bit of slack on those lines when I need to readjust them. You might not need it, but it's always good to know where the boat hook is. Unless you like climbing masts, always tie off a halyard to something when you're not using it. I've got a downhaul rigged on my force day that helps bring the jib down without it having to go forward. When I set the jib, I make sure the ring on the force day is between the first and second hank on the top of the jib.
The manual for the Compact 19 states that the jib sheets should go between the two side stays. This holds true except for larger head sails like a Genoa. For those, you want to go outside both side stays. There's so little wind today that I can raise the sails in the slip. Typically, I wait until I'm outside the channel before I do that. The bottom few hanks on my jib tend to get caught on the headstay. I really should add something to keep this from dropping down quite so far so they don't get wedged when I try to raise the sail. A quick check of the boom vang and the outhauls, and you're ready to go. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and maybe next time we'll actually get to go sailing.